This is a head-to-head -head comparison between the hugely popular Focusrite Scarlett 2 audio interface and the newer Universal Audio Vault 2. They're both very budget friendly, but which one is better? Let's find out. Hi, I'm Ed from edthorn.com, here to help you set up and make the most out of your home studios. Now, the reality is these devices are virtually identical, but they have some subtle differences which may sway your decision between the two. There are a few minor differences as well, which I'll sprinkle throughout the video. Starting with the similarities, and both of these devices are PC and iOS compatible, small form factor desktop interfaces housed in good quality solid metal casings. The Scarlet is noticeably smaller with plastic front and back faces instead of the smarter looking metal ones found on the Vault. Both feature equally smooth rotary pots and plastic buttons, illuminating their respective features in their own fashion. And of course, both feature two XLR line-in jack instrument cable combination inputs, stereo monitor outputs, a stereo headphone amplifier, 24-bit and 192 kilohertz converters, mono and stereo direct monitoring for zero latency monitoring, and they're both USB-C bus powered. Both devices come with an attractive rate of additional software, including a DAW, your music production software, plugins and sample libraries, making these both very good value for money purchases. And of course, both devices come with 48 volts phantom power for your condenser microphones, but the Volt features a nifty five second delayed soft start that mutes the outputs while the voltage loads up to avoid any pops in your headphones or speakers. Specification wise, these are virtually identical as you can see on screen now. Any half or single decibel differences aren't worth talking about in my opinion, so I'm not going to dwell on these, but feel free to spar amongst yourselves about these in the comments below. This chart is available to download for free on my website, edthorn.com. And for you folks wanting to monitor with reverb or track through guitar amp plugins, there are some round trip latencies on screen now as well. As you can see, Volt performs consistently about three milliseconds slower than the Scala at 48 kilohertz, but it's virtually identical at 192 kilohertz. Now, a note on round trip latencies, your combination of computer and door will be different from mine. So these measurements might not be quite accurate for your setup. Also, the plugins you use and how your system handles these plugins is likely to affect the round trip latency even further. So take any round trip latency measurements you see online with a little pinch of salt. Now, whilst you're watching this, if you consider buying either of these audio interfaces, I've placed links in the description below to the best deals available online for your convenience. Purchasing any of your home studio gear through these links is a great way to support the channel if you found value in this comparison. On top of the aforementioned features, both devices feature additional preamp modeling circuitry based on their own brand's classic analog preamps that impose a unique tonality to your audio at the click of a button. Air mode on the Scarlett has been around for a while and has also featured on Scarlett's bigger sibling, the Claret line of audio interfaces. This emulates the EQ signature of Focusrite's flagship ISA preamp with a boost of up to four decibels in the upper frequencies. This results in a more spacious and airy sound. Here's my voice through the Scarlett 2i2 dry. And here's my voice with air mode imposed. If you're interested to see how the Scarlett and Claret interfaces compare and sound, check out the link to this video in the description below. Now, vintage mode on the Vault imposes second and third harmonics to the mid range, akin to that of Universal Audio's flagship 610A preamps. Here's my voice through the Vault 2 dry. And here's my voice with vintage mode imposed. Just to let you know, these have both been recorded with the Shure SM7B. So air mode is pretty much simply an EQ circuit, whereas the vintage mode is adding rich harmonics to the signal. Both help vocals sit better in a mix, but in my experience, I find vintage modes adds a lovely texture and presence to the vocals without adding the additional potentially problematic sibilance that air mode can introduce. Here are some audio examples of each interface, dry and with air mode and vintage modes in post, with my friend Lee Limerick kindly playing his Yamaha FG700 MS Dreadnought acoustic guitar recorded through my rather lovely Austrian Audio OC818 condenser microphones.
Let me know which you prefer in the comments and why. Now, I've got to pause the video here for a second because I was genuinely surprised how good this audio sounded. And it just goes to show that modern preamps in these modern interfaces combined with good playing, a lovely guitar, a great microphone, good placement can capture great results. Proof that you don't necessarily need expensive interfaces that YouTubers like myself will tell you to buy, but you can get good results with these interfaces. This setup isn't anything you guys can't use yourself at home. Now I admit the OC818s are expensive microphones, but they're not U87 expensive, and this is a great example of if you're considering upgrading your interface, maybe reconsider upgrading your microphone instead because that might yield better results. And just for my own enjoyment, I nerded out, pan these microphones left and right, one from each um, interface, added a low pass filter, a tiny bit of compression and reverb, and this is the result. On top of vintage mode, you may have heard the Vault has a sibling called the Vault 276, which comes with a built-in analog compressor. You can find out more about this and hear more audio examples of vintage mode in my full review of this interface here. Let's talk monitor outputs. Now here's an interesting comparison for you. Despite the audio to digital and digital to audio converters being identical on both devices, the Sirius Logic CS4272s, for whatever that means to anyone, these devices do not sound the same. However, Universal Audio have implemented this converter with whatever combination of other components has resulted in the Vault having an extra two decibels of dynamic range on the monitor outputs. What does this do? This creates more headroom before digital distortion creeps in with a fraction quicker, more detailed transient response and seemingly more, more open stereo imaging, resulting in the Vault sounding a little clearer. The difference here is very minimal, but I feel I should comment on it because it does differentiate the two. Now, now with that said, the Scarlet has considerably more overall output, but my Neumann KH120 speakers were clipping way before either monitor output was anywhere near their maximum. Both devices have acres of headroom in this department. You're unlikely to ever fully utilize all of it, so personally I'd be choosing Vault based on the quality of the audio reproduction. Headphone outputs, and at 110 decibels, the Vault headphone amplifier has an additional six decibels of dynamic range over the Scarlet, resulting in noticeably more headroom, which makes this interface better suited for high impedance headphones, such as the Sennheiser HD 600s I tested this with. Again, the sound difference is similar to that of the monitor outputs, also suggesting better implementation of the converters. The higher headphone output also improves Vault's direct monitoring system over the Scarlet's, which I've always felt was a bit weak and simply not loud enough. The additional headroom on the vault enables me to dial in more of my audio input and get a better balance between my channel input and the door input. I made a similar comparison in my Behringer UMC202 versus Scarlet review on the screen now, where I commented the Behringer's louder headphone amplifier was much more useful than the unnecessarily loud monitor outputs on the Scarlet, and that the Behringer, as in this case with the Vault, has this priority the right way around. So probably another point for the Vault here. Common question about this level of audio interfaces is, can it power a gain-hungry microphone such as the Shure SM7B? Before we answer this though, let me know your thoughts about these interfaces so far in the comments below, and if you're thinking of buying one, which one and why, I'd love to hear from you guys. So the answer to the Shure SM7B question is, Absolutely yes. In my experience, 50 decibels is plenty, and both of these preamps offer enough gain for an SM7B. If you're a soft vocalist and sing from the back of your throat quite airy, you know, you might need a signal booster such as a cloud lifter, but I'd be tempted just to buy another interface with more input gain rather than buying two products. The SSL2 springs to mind with 62 decibels of input gain. Or alternatively, learn how to project. If, if you want. <laughs> in terms of software, there's not loads to compare. Both devices come with Ableton Lite, soft tube plugins, loops, and sample libraries. A plus for the Scarlet is you get addictive keys, which is probably my favorite piano sampler. Plus for the Vault is a collection of Brainworks plugins and Melodyne, which is the industry standard tuning software.
So which interface do I think is better? Now it should be noted that neither brand is sponsoring this video. I'm not getting paid for any of this. These are honest user-based reviews. Well, it comes down to the fact that Universal Audio have prioritized a better headphone amplifier over an unnecessarily loud monitor output. Combined with the benefits of the additional two decibels of dynamic range on the monitor outputs, the Vault would be my choice. And of course, I haven't mentioned yet, Vault has a five pin MIDI connectivity for your old school synths and keyboards. With only 20 pounds or $20 separating the two, I would definitely stretch to the Vault if you can. Click here to watch more audio interface reviews and comparisons. Check out my free 2022 home studio gear guide, link below. Thanks for watching, be kind to one another, and I'll see you on the next comparison.